I am also grateful to my profession. Я также благодарна моей профессии. Because it flew me across continents. Потому что она носила меня через континенты. Split up by country borders. Разделенные границами стран. My travel experiences. Опыт моих путешествий. Don't belong in the framework of this book. Не входит в рамки этой книги. And they would be disappointing anyway. И он огорчит в любом случае. Because I never looked for or found national differences in the various places of the world. Поскольку я никогда не искала или находила национальных различий в разных местах мира. Only common features. Только распространенные особенности. Eternal human nature. Вечная человеческая природа. The most fascinating sight. Самое пленительное зрелище. I have seen in my travels. Которое я видела в моих путешествиях. Is perhaps the Pithecanthropus pekinensis of the Chinese Museum. Вероятно, Pithecanthrop pekinensis в китайском музее. This huge ape. Огромный примат. Is still perfectly an animal. Еще совершенно животное. But at the same time is halfway human. Но в то же время наполовину человек. I felt as if a distorting mirror of all humankind were held up for me to see. Я чувствовала себя так, как если бы кривое зеркало всего человечества было поднято передо мной, чтобы я увидела. I couldn't get away from its influence for days. Я не могла избавиться от этого воздействия несколько дней. It is wonderful as an exhibition as well. Само устройство выставки было удивительным. The showcase is padded with faceted mirrors. Витрина обита гранёными зеркалами. So wherever beholders are standing, и где бы ни стояли зрители, they can see the ape from all sides and themselves. Они могли видеть примата со всех сторон и себя. At the time of our visit, во время нашего визита, there was a group of Korean schoolgirls in the museum. В музее была группа корейских школьниц. Well, it wasn't until the teenagers. Ну, они еще были подростками. Each and every one. Все до одного. Arranged the red ribbons in their plates. Поправляли красные ленты в своих косах. In the mirror of the showcase that they looked at the exciting sight and discussed it in their twittering voices. Глядя в зеркало витрины, на захватывающее зрелище, и обсуждали это щебечущими голосами. The venue of my other great experience. Место встречи моего другого сильного опыта. Was the Siberian taiga. Была сибирская тайга. We set off on an all-day excursion to Lake Baikal. Мы отправились на весь день на экскурсию на озеро Байкал. A well-known, хорошо известное, ominous feeling aroused me from the spell of the landscape. Зловещее чувство будило меня от очарования пейзажа. A palm-sized run in my stocking. Стрелка на моих чулках размером с ладонь. Don't worry. Не беспокойтесь. Our guide comforted me. Наша гид успокоила меня. We will buy a pair in the nearest shop. Мы купим пару в ближайшем магазине. We did find a shop in a tiny Kalkaz village. Мы нашли магазин в маленькой колхозной деревне. The shop assistant. Продавец. Absorbed in her book. Поглощенная своей книгой. Sold smoked fish and hollow bricks. Продавала копченую рыбу, пустотелые кирпичи. Hunting accessories. Аксессуары для охоты. And hammocks in a room of less than two cubic meters. И гамаки. В комнате меньше двух кубических метров. She didn't even look up when I entered and asked for a pair of stockings. Она даже не посмотрела, когда я зашла и попросила пару чулок. She just dropped a reply when reading. Она лишь кинула фразу, пока читала. Oh, how much I felt at home. О, как же сильно я чувствовала себя дома. That без шва нет. Что без шва нет. That is, they were sold out of seamless stockings. То есть они продали чулки без шва. I bowed my head to the efficiency of mass communication. Я склонила мою голову перед эффективностью массовой коммуникации. Just two months ago, только два месяца назад, the fashion had started from some boutique on the Rue de la Paix in Paris that seamless stockings were now in fashion. Мода началась с одного бутика на Rue de la Paix в Париже, что чулки без шва сейчас в моде. And wouldn't you know that the women living on the banks of the Angara River knew it? И могли бы вы представить, что женщины, живущие на берегу реки Ангара, знают это. Grateful. Flu. Split up. Experiences. Common features. Fascinating sight. Perfectly. Distorting mirror. Humankind. Influence. Showcase. Padded. Faceted mirrors. Beholders. 
twittering voices. Venue. Ominous. Aroused. Comforted. Assistant. Absorbed. Smoked fish. Hollow bricks. Hunting accessories. Hammock. Bowed. Efficiency. Bank. I am also grateful to my profession because it flew me across continents split up by country borders. My travel experiences don't belong in the framework of this book, and they would be disappointing anyway because I never looked for or found national differences in the various places of the world, only common features, eternal human nature. The most fascinating sight I have seen in my travels is perhaps the Pithecanthropus pekinensis of the Chinese Museum. This huge ape is still perfectly an animal but at the same time is halfway human. I felt as if a distorting mirror of all humankind were held up for me to see. I couldn't get away from its influence for days. It is wonderful as an exhibition as well, the showcase is padded with faceted mirrors so wherever beholders are standing, they can see the ape from all sides, and themselves. At the time of our visit, there was a group of Korean schoolgirls in the museum. Well, it wasn't until the teenagers, each and every one, arranged the red ribbons in their plates in the mirror of the showcase that they looked at the exciting sight and discussed it in their twittering voices. The venue of my other great experience was the Siberian taiga. We set off on an all-day excursion to Lake Baikal. A well-known, ominous feeling aroused me from the spell of the landscape, a palm-sized run in my stocking. Don't worry, our guide comforted me. We will buy a pair in the nearest shop. We did find a shop in a tiny Kalkaz village. The shop assistant, absorbed in her book, sold smoked fish and hollow bricks, hunting accessories, and hammocks in a room of less than two cubic meters. She didn't even look up when I entered and asked for a pair of stockings, she just dropped a reply when reading, oh, how much I felt at home, that, Beshvayanidi, that is, they were sold out of seamless stockings. I bowed my head to the efficiency of mass communication, just two months ago, the fashion had started from some boutique on the Rue de la Paix in Paris that seamless stockings were now in fashion. And wouldn't you know that the women living on the banks of the Angara River knew it.